So you're getting into photography and you want to know more about digital processing or raw files in packages such as Lightroom. I'm going to give you three little tips which is going to really improve your game no end. Let's get into this. Welcome back to the channel guys, not just for you, but also to me. I know I've been away for about eight or nine months. I do apologize about that. I got very busy in 2019 shooting a feature film and with work on top of that, I was just really busy and I kind of neglected YouTube and you as well. So I am very, very sorry, but I'm back. I'm gonna be making sure I punch out at least one video every week or two to begin with, because just like you, I'm still in lockdown as well. So do yourself a favor, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and click the little notification bell so that you see every single time I upload new content to this channel. Now over the past few months, I've had a few people reach out to me in the comment section and ask me questions about things like processing in packages like Lightroom. A lot of people find Lightroom very, very daunting. And I know from my point of view, when I first started using it, I didn't know what I was doing either. I've been used to a package called DxO and there's also one called Capture One. I was sort of used to them and I had no idea about Lightroom at all. And it got me thinking, what are the most important functions that can help to teach you Lightroom quickly and easily? So let's load up Lightroom, have a bit of a look. I'll show you an example of some photographs I've taken and show you what you can do to not only learn the package very quickly, but also improve your editing skills as a photographer. So I've opened up Lightroom and I'm gonna take two photographs here which I've taken of a friend of mine. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to bring myself down to find where I have my photographs. And there we are, I have two over here which I've taken of a friend of mine. So I'm gonna select these two, or either that or check all down the box over here, and I'm gonna say import. And there they go, you can see they have both loaded up here into Lightroom. Now up on the top right hand corner here, you have library, develop, map, book, slideshow. Don't pay attention to that just yet um, because we're not gonna confuse you. As you can see, the first picture is selected and the second one isn't. They're also not rotated the correct way right now. What you can do is if you're using a Mac, you can hit Command A. I'm not too sure what it's like on a uh, PC because I don't use them, I apologize. But Command A on a Mac will select all of the pictures for you. To rotate them to the left, you just have to hit Command and there's an open bracket symbol just near your delete key. Press that and there you go, it's rotated it. You can do the same thing on the right hand side by hitting the close bracket symbol as well. Now we have to start to develop these things. But if you've never used Lightroom before, like I said, this could be a little bit daunting. Let's just open up one of the photographs here. I'll select image number one. And if I press D, that brings us in, into the develop module area of Lightroom. Once again, don't be alarmed by this. You can see over here, we've got the histogram. We can see all these controls down here. And if you keep scrolling down, there are so many of them and it can confuse you. Don't let it do that. It's quite simple to use. What I want you to do though in this panel is scroll all the way down until you see over here, lens corrections, profile. Hit these two buttons, remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. Now, as soon as you've done that, Lightroom recognizes that I shot this photograph on a Canon camera with a Canon 24 to 105 millimeter lens and the profile was Adobe RGB. Now, that's all you have to do. I'm not gonna overcomplicate it. So click those two boxes and if it hasn't selected the lens that you used, you can always go down here and select the type of lens that you used or the make that you used. But in this case, Lightroom is pretty good at actually selecting which lens you did use. So that is step number one. Step number two, you can see over here, we've got exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. If you've never used Lightroom before or anything like Camera Raw, you may not know what these controls do. Don't be alarmed, they are not as complicated as you think. Quite simply, exposure of course takes the exposure up, that's super bright, or down to super dark. So I'll just Command Z to go back to where we were. Now I know that these sliders in Lightroom can look absolutely daunting and they might not make any sense to you, but you don't need to feel that way. It's a very easy program to use and with a few simple tips, you'll be well on your way to mastering these sliders like a pro. What I recommend photographers should do if you're learning Lightroom for the first time is see the little auto button up over here? If you click that, bang. Magically, what Lightroom has done is it has changed all the settings to give a really good exposure. You can see it's moved the highlights down, it's moved the shadows up, 
it's moved the whites up and it's taken the blacks down. And if you click your forward slash key, that's your raw as you shot it, and that is what Lightroom has now done. So before and after, before and after. Or if you hit Y, you get a split screen over there. I'll just hit the I button to get rid of the information of the file. So if you hit Y, that gives you a split screen. You can see your original and you can see your edited version after that. Let's keep moving on. So I'm gonna hit Y again to go to a single screen. Now that you might think is really good, it's well exposed, but this is a glamour photograph. We wanna make sure we've got some shadow detail in there. We don't wanna see everything because the model is meant to be the focus. But before we move on to that, over here you've got WB which stands for white balance. It is on as shot at the moment in the camera, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit auto and see what that does. Okay, so you can see there what Lightroom has done is it has actually made the photograph rather cold or more blue. That's because we've got white lights above us, we've got the daylight coming in from the window over here, but you can see I've got a kicker light on the side of the chair over here, that was orange. Now, I don't particularly like this, it's a bit too cold for me, so I'm just gonna go back to as shot. When it comes to white balance, one of the things that's really good to do is to try to get the white balance as best as you can get it accurately in camera while you are shooting. So if you're using soft boxes and you're using different lighting on the day that you do your shoot, try to make sure that you set your white balance in camera so that when you look on the back of the camera as you're shooting, you're happy with how they look. You don't want to be shooting photographs where they look all blue on the back of the camera thinking, I'll fix it in editing, because yes, while you can fix it in editing, you also want to see on the back of the screen as you're shooting that they look the way you want them. Especially if you're adding color filters and gels, like what I do with my type of photography, you want to get it as spot on as you can in camera while you're shooting and then fine tune it if you need to in Lightroom. With my contrast, I like to use a contrast of 25. It just makes the blacks a little bit more rich. Every photographer's got their style. This is just my particular way. You can use as much or as little contrast as you want. Over here, the highlights. If you move this up and down, you see how a skin's getting sort of really dark now, but if I move it up again, it's getting really bright. This is what the highlights do. So let's take that there. Back to the, the automatic default that the computer made when we hit the auto button. Leave it at negative 49. The shadows on the other hand, I don't want the shadows to be so light. So I'm going to take the slider down a little bit and you can see there that the shadows are going down. That's very dark and this is not so dark. I might just take my shadow detail to maybe about plus 10. Just so there's a little bit there. The whites, if you hit your option button and click on the slider, can you see those small little dots there? That shows you where your whites are gonna come through first. So plus seven is fairly good, I'm happy with that. And it was probably on the glass. If we do the same with the blacks, hit the option button and click on the pointer. And there you go, so that is showing you what is going to be black, negative 14. That's also pretty good. I typically set my blacks at around negative 10 or negative 12 anyway. What I can do now is if I wanted to, it's brought the exposure up by 1.2 stops. Now that could be a little bit too much because I don't want to see all that detail in the background. So I can start messing with my exposure here, take it down to uh, plus 0.7. And if I wanted to, I could then say, well, I'll bring up the shadow detail again to say plus 43. I might take the blacks to negative 10. And I mentioned before with the saturation, we might take the saturation down over here to say negative 10 as well. There we are. So. As we're doing this, you can see that you can start to see the changes coming through, but if you want to know exactly what you've done, once again, hit the Y button, and there we go. We have our before photograph, which is just the raw file, and our after photograph showing all the changes we have done, and that was very simple. As you can see, by hitting that auto button in your tone area here, Lightroom basically gives you something that you can start to fine tune with. So if you're getting used to Lightroom, my recommendation is hit that automatic button and then fine tune the sliders and learn as you go rather than just starting from scratch. Now these tips and tricks that I'm showing you apply to all types of imagery. Now I obviously shoot a lot of glamour photography, portraits, boudoir and so forth, but you can use these for any type of photographs. They could be landscape photographs, they could be photographs of models or food or anything that you're capturing. This is the best way to learn how to use these packages. So just because I'm doing this for glamour photography, don't think for a minute that it's not suited to your type of photography either. What you can do now, of course, if you're happy with your process raw file, is hit Command-Shift-E and that will bring up our export options. 
where you can choose where you want to save your file. So I'm going to say, come over here, go onto my desktop. I'll go into here, make a new folder and just say Lightroom export. So I'm going to choose that particular folder. The file name, I can either rename them with a custom name. If I say edit, I can do whatever I want by putting in file names and sequences and so forth. But in this instance, as you can see down here, I've already given these files names and numbers. So I'm just going to say rename to the existing file name. Scroll down here, I'm going to export to a JPEG or you can do a TIFF. I prefer to use JPEG when working with photographs. I like to have the quality set at 90. Keep the color space away the camera has shot it as well. So in my particular instance, it's Adobe RGB, and that's actually a Lightroom default. One important thing that you need to take into consideration when you resize your image over here, resize to fit the long edge of the photograph. I like to say 40 centimeters high and a resolution of 300 dots per inch or pixels per inch in this case. Now 40 centimeters is larger than an A4 piece of paper, but of course if you increase that size later in Photoshop after doing a lot of processing, it will still print at very high resolution. And then you just have to hit export. You can see Lightroom up there in the top left hand corner working away to export the file and bang, there you go, it's done. And that's basically all that's involved. You can now bring your photograph into Photoshop where you can make as many changes as you want, put on a lot more effects and just enjoy the creative process which is photography. So you can see with just these few basic tips how easy and simple Lightroom is to use. Now would you be using the automatic function all the time as you progress? Absolutely not. I personally don't use it very often myself because when you get experience as a photographer using things like Lightroom and Photoshop, you know what the sliders do. And when you develop your own style, then you can also go in there manually and start playing with them. But from a learning point of view, hitting automatic on some of those buttons is the best way to learn because you can see what Lightroom has done and then you can make little incremental adjustments from there. So I hope that this tip has been super helpful to you. Now to the best of my knowledge, you haven't got a similar function in Camera Raw. I could be wrong, I don't use it, but if you are thinking about using Lightroom, definitely take the plunge, download it from the Adobe Creative Suite, and just use these little three tips I've shown you. Sometimes, as you can see, the white balance can either work in your favor or not. So you can either use automatic, as shot, or you can choose the white balance settings, such as daylight, tungsten, or any of the other presets. So you can really play around there. But just don't forget, automatic white balance, automatic tone adjustments, and make sure you select your camera and lens profile in the lens corrections. And that's basically it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that subscribe button. I would love to connect with you again. Leave a comment for me below. Let me know what other things you would like to learn in Lightroom. Now, I do not know everything there is, but for the style of photographs that I do, I can definitely teach you a few things. So leave a comment for me below. So until next time, guys, stay indoors, stay safe, and stay creative.